Hey everyone, it's Gabriel here again and I always get this common question uh, by my mentees and my students related to their competition and some of them are worried about their competition being too far ahead some of them are worried about losing sales to their competition and some of them are already ahead of their competition but they want to know how to continue to stay ahead so because this is so commonly asked i want to do this video for you today and i want to share with you three simple mindset that you need to have in order to crush your business competition how you can dominate your competition and never have to worry about them ever again but before i dive right into it i really appreciate the early thumbs up for this video and if you're new to this channel welcome i'm on a journey to master three areas of my life and that is business investing and productivity and every week i post videos documenting and sharing this journey i review marketing hacks that I've used to build seven to eight figure businesses online, what I'm currently investing in and productivity hacks to do more with less. So if you're into any of that stuff, please consider subscribing to my channel. So a little backstory of why I decided to do this video today. Uh, you know, I have a digital marketing mentoring and coaching program where I coach people about YouTube ads and Facebook ads on how they can generate leads online. I coach a lot of business owners and service professionals and help them to double or even triple their sales within a short period of time. Now, it's not a magic pill. You need to have a good offer, a good product in order for marketing to work. But I'm personally very proud of this program because we've created amazing results. And what's more amazing is that there are students who are complete beginners, which means that they have never had experience creating any ads. They never created a sales funnel or even any website before some of them don't even use facebook for their own personal use yet we were able to coach these people to create their ads and their funnels and they are now generating leads online on autopilot but as much as i'm teaching them about ads and funnels i realized that one of the biggest challenge i constantly face is some of their mindset because as a coach a lot of times it's not just about teaching them what they need to do that's the skill set i believe that mindset is actually more important than your skill set your mindset is like the lead if your mindset is limited, it doesn't matter what you know or how good you are in your skill set, your results will be limited by your mindset. So over time, as I'm coaching them, I realize that I'm not just coaching them on skill set. I have to coach them on their mindset, especially I have to call them out or catch them whenever they have a disempowering belief system that is holding them back. And so I realized that those mentees of mine who are doing well and some mentees of mine who are still struggling have a big difference in how they think. So I wanna cover three simple mindsets right now. And the first mindset you need to have to dominate a competition is to have an abundance mindset. You need to think bigger, you need to play bigger. Now to give you an example, I'm not gonna name any names because I wanna talk about a subject and not a person. And I love this student of mine and that's the reason why you know I corrected this person and you know we are on the same page right now. But what happened was this. This student of mine was kind of struggling to create a marketing campaign for nearly a year. One of the reasons is because this person had no experience creating any ads, any funnels, any video before. So that was one big hurdle by itself. But over time, I realized that this person has a few limiting belief and mindset issue that is preventing this person from moving forward. One of which is being too much of a perfectionist and that kind of delayed the launch of a lot of things. And I always teach in my class that you shouldn't aim for perfection, you should always aim for progression, right? Progression will always trump for perfection. You can never ever achieve perfection if you don't even start. But long story short, I was really proud of what this person had achieved recently because um, despite all the challenges, this person finally launched ads, videos, funnels, and started generating leads and even closing deals online through a Zoom call. This person had never done this before and this person was able to close at least five figure worth of deals just by spending a couple hundred dollars on Facebook ads. And did I forget to mention that this person is in MLM. MLM is one of the hardest market to generate leads and close sales online. But this person did it despite all the different challenges. And we have one rule when you achieve any wins in my coaching and mentoring program is that we encourage you to share the wins to the group. Now this is done so not to put a feather on my cap, but so that we encourage each other of what is possible. Once again, because your mindset is the lead, a lot of times a person is not moving because they are not motivated or they're not inspired. Or, uh, you know, we really gave them what to do, but because they don't believe in that skill set. So this person who actually achieved result was initially motivated because someone posted their wins in the group. See, many of us, we are taught certain skill set, but if we don't believe in a skill set, we will never act on it. And sometimes all we need is a little inspiration, a little, if this person can do it, I can do it too. This is one of the reasons why we encourage everyone to share the wins. And so this person did share the wins. And one week after this student shared, uh, this student became extremely worried. Started sending me some messages privately, worried about uh, creating more competition, uh, worried about people copying, uh, worried about you know all this stuff. Um, if this person were to share 
uh, his or her wins. And what's really strange is that this kind of behavior is usually very common with people who are generally struggling or not doing very well or at the level that they want to be. And what was really interesting is that just a few days before, I had another student, uh, his name is CK, I've asked him for permission uh, to share this openly. And he had a completely different mindset. He's a real estate agent and he's doing pretty well. And all along, he has always been very open to sharing results without fear of competition, without the fear of other agents copying him or you know creating competition for himself. And in fact, just a few days ago, he did an online training to about 120 real estate agents, or maybe more than that. Um, I forgot what's the exact numbers, but he taught them about digital marketing, literally creating more competitors for himself. And he even credited me and recommended anyone who's interested to learn from me. Now, what I found interesting was that, of course, I thank him for that because I said that not everybody is willing to do that. I actually had a lot of uh, clients and students in the past who kind of prevented me from sharing with people their results is because they were afraid that their competitors would come and look for me, therefore creating more competitors for themselves. And what I found interesting is that there's two types of people. One person is very open, very secure, doesn't really care. And another person is usually uh, very insecure or afraid of competition. And what I tend to realize is that the person that is open uh, with a sort of abundance mindset usually tend to do well long term. I've seen it again and again with people I work with, with students I work with. Um, these are the two mindsets that I see. And, and those that are more close-minded, are more afraid of competition, uh, they usually live in a much more scarcity world and usually they don't do as well or they are usually struggling. So long story short, people with an abundance mindset are usually secure and seems to be doing way better than those with a scarcity mindset and usually insecure. And I believe that it all comes down to how you see competition. People who live in a scarcity world tend to see competition as a bad thing. But people who live in an abundance world tend to see competition as a good thing. In fact, I love competitors because I feel that my competitors are also helping me to educate the market. Yes, I may be the only one in a small market, but because it's a small market, it's hard to grow. Like for example, in Asia, digital marketing adoption is still rather slow. And so when I try to pitch to a traditional business and I try to educate this person, you know, why they need to go online, a lot of times they are still resistant to the change. And it's so hard for me, just one person, to educate the entire market. But what if I have a hundred competitors educating the market at the same time? What's gonna happen is that it's gonna be far easier to convince the market and eventually the market is gonna grow. There's gonna be more customers because what's gonna happen is that if traditional business owners started adopting digital marketing, started going, started going online, started using email marketing, started using Facebook marketing, what's gonna happen is that their peers are gonna see, hey, that's the norm, we need to start doing that. And therefore it creates an even bigger market because those people who are not even open for digital marketing will start looking into it. And therefore it creates more customers for everybody so that it becomes easier for people like me to close a deal because the market is already educated and conditioned to buy versus I'm trying to educate the whole market by myself. It's all about perspective and how you see competition. And here's an example of uh, what I've read in this book called Play Bigger. And in this book called Play Bigger, it talks about an example of Tesla and how Tesla was a market leader or a category king in the EV space, the electric vehicle space. But the problem with Tesla was that EV was too small. The adoption rate was still very small. And because of that, they weren't able to reach a certain scale. And what Tesla is trying to do is that when they reach scale, they can reduce the cost of their vehicle and therefore making them more profitable. So they were not profitable. They were making losses because of the high cost. And in order for them to lower the cost, to increase their profit margin is to scale the business. But they were not able to scale it because of a small market. So what Tesla did was very unconventional. Uh, Elon Musk announced in 2005 14, that they will openly share their patent. You gotta understand that in the business world, patent is sacred. It is your weapon to keep your enemies at bay. It's a weapon to, to win your competition. But what Tesla did, or what Elon Musk did, was that they wanted more competition. They legally released their patent for every car company to use. And what they were trying to do was they were betting on the fact that more automobiles company will start creating EV vehicles. And because of that, the entire market space will be bigger. And so even though they created competition for themselves, they will still be a market leader of an expanding market. So even if they take majority of the market, they are still 
growing despite having more competitors. When I first heard about this story, it blew me away because this is not how most people would think. But once again, I want to encourage you guys that the market is big enough for everyone. We no longer live in a world where we are just fighting along local businesses with limited customers. We live in an open online world today where customers are everywhere. Unless you're planning to be the next Apple or Facebook, someone gaining a customer also doesn't mean that you lose a customer because you probably won't even reach that customer in the first place because the market is that big. So start thinking bigger and start playing bigger. So that's the first mindset. And the second mindset is to stop focusing on your competitors. Focus on your customers. And that was what I told my student. I was sharing that if you are thinking about your competitors right now, it means that you're taking away time from thinking and focusing about your customers. You see, if you're focusing on your customers, you have no time to think about your competitors. But if you're thinking about your competitors, it means that you're no longer thinking about your customers because we only can focus on one thing at a time. Here's an example of a wonderful interview uh, with uh, Apple CEO Tim Cook with the recent uh, iOS 14 update, 14.5 update, where they had this whole privacy update where they disallowed certain apps from tracking and that really affected Facebook's um, ad revenue. Facebook is now not able to track certain behaviors because of this new policy. So there was a big whole saga going on. You know, Facebook was trying to fight Apple. Uh, I, I believe that if, if you guys are in marketing, you probably heard of that. So the interviewer asked Tim Cook, what do you think about Facebook challenges right now because of your new policy on privacy that is affecting their business? And guess what? He replied. Tim Cook actually said he doesn't know because he doesn't think about Facebook. Apple is only constantly thinking about their customers and how they can constantly serve their customer better. When I heard that, I knew immediately why Apple is the largest and the most valuable company in the world right now. They are not even thinking about Facebook even though Facebook is constantly talking about Apple. So if you are focusing on your competitors, you are taking your eyes off your customers. In my business, a few of my students are afraid their competitors will copy their funnels, their ads, and I always tell them that I'm never afraid. You know, there are a lot of people who have copied me. There are a lot of people who have copied my funnels, my ads, even the style, even the copywriting. Uh, some of them even copy and paste. It can get annoying, but again, my focus is on them. My focus is on the customer. My focus is on my students and helping them to get the results that they want. And if I can help them to get the results they want, they will be happy and they may buy from me again and they may spread the word for me. This is something that your competitors cannot copy. They can copy the surface level stuff. They can copy my copywriting word for word but they cannot copy my results that I'm generating for my clients. They cannot copy the experience that my clients and my coaching students are going through because I know my customers well and I'm able to give my customer so much more value in terms of better experience, better results, and they are spreading the words for me. And once again, this is something your competitors cannot copy. So yes, they can copy you, they can get some sales here and there, but are they really serving their customers? Are they really giving their customers the best experience? Because at the end of the day, I do have people that jump from other agencies to my agencies because the other agencies who copied me couldn't deliver the results for them. So yes, I may lose some sales short term, but if I constantly focus on my customers and build a great experience for them, I will still win long term. And if you keep doing that, you're already a few steps ahead because your competitors need time to get results for their customers or clients in order to catch up to you. But the moment you take your eyes off your customers and start to look behind, you slow down for them to catch up. That's dumb. And so this leads me to number three, constantly innovate based on your customer's feedback. Again, focusing on your customer, you will get feedback. And this is something that your competitors do not have. They do not have the data that you are collecting from your customers and they cannot copy it. So as you focus on your customers, you gain more feedback. Start by asking the right questions. A lot of times you're not giving your customers what they really want. It's because you're not even asking. So here are some questions that you can ask your customers. So the first question is, why did you buy from me? Now you can do different variation of this question. Why do you sign up for my staff? Why do you come to me? It is the same thing. Now, the reason why this question is so important is because most people make the mistakes of asking why they don't buy or why they don't sign up or why aren't you buying? But the truth is that some people who are not going to buy will never buy no matter what. So you want to focus on those who are buying. Don't focus on what you did wrong, focus on what you did right and then do more of that. And this was a true story. There was a time where, you know, people are not buying and I'm constantly asking, sending emails to people who didn't buy my stuff and asking them, why didn't they buy? Why didn't they buy? I know that there are some value to that, but the moment I started to switch my focus to those who are buying and started asking them, why did you buy? And I started to do more of what I did right. My sales went up, but when I was focusing on why people didn't buy, I wasn't able to increase my sales at all. So. 
Focusing on the right thing to ask is important. The first question is, why do you buy from me? The second question is, how can I better serve you? It's a simple question. All you gotta do is ask. And after years of asking this question, we now have an offer for our agency that is irresistible to our audience. Again, your competitors cannot copy this because they don't have the data that you have. They may try to copy, but they won't understand why. And if they don't understand why, they can never replicate the results. And question number three is, what do you want to see more of? And what do you want to see less of? Again, these are questions to ask to people who are buying from you. And so you get a rough idea of what they want to see more and what they want to see less of, uh, what are things that you can improve. And what we did was we simply asked this question in some ways uh, through either a Zoom, through emails, through uh, different kinds of channel. And because of that, we were able to create a better and more irresistible offer that our competitors just simply cannot copy. So that's it. Three simple mindset. Number one, think abundance, play bigger. Competition is a good thing. Number two, focus on your customers, not your competitors. And number three, ask feedback and constantly innovate so that you can stay ahead. Let me know what are your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you agree or you disagree, and if you have any questions about dominating your competition, I'll be replying every single one of them in the comment section right below this video. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and consider subscribing to my channel for more videos like this. That's all I have for you today. Bye for now.